Aftershocks right here at AftershocksTV.com. And um, on with us today to speak about their brand new live release, Live Against the World, one of the best bands in the world, uh, the band Hammerfall. And with us is bassist Frederick Larson. Bassist, or uh, Frederick, how are you, man? Hi, I'm fine, thanks. And you? Good. I'm good, man. It's um, it's always good to get a nice, solid dose of metal from Hammerfall, whether it's a new recording or whether it's live music. It's just always good to have Hammerfall new stuff in the in the earphones, so to speak. Oh, thanks. That, that's really warming. <laughs> sure. Now, now, Frederick, I, I've got to say right off the bat, it's it's very fortunate that you guys decided to record live against the world when you did. I mean. Talk about being right up against the pandemic that shut everything down. You recorded this, what, like weeks before they shut everything down, right? Yeah. I mean, first of all, we're really lucky to be able to do a full European tour before this started. Well, it actually started when we were on tour, but we, we managed to finish it before, yeah, you know, everything shut down. So, sure. and I mean, we're lucky to, to have planned this before as well. Uh, since it's, it takes a lot of planning to do a live show, uh, to record a live show. Right. And uh, yeah, it, it, it was the right decision. It, it's really fortunate for us to have a live TV sure. and, and, and album out in October when, when everybody else is live streaming, but uh, it, this is a full blown show. Right, definitely. Now, I, I obviously here in the States, I did not get a chance to catch Hammerfall on the, on the tour for the album, but I did catch one of the live streams. I don't remember where it was from. It was either Vakken or Sweden Rock or one of those. I'm not sure which one, which one yeah. it was, but it did seem to me like this was the biggest tour, like as far as sound and production and everything for you guys. Was it indeed the biggest, most expansive tour you've done so far? Yeah, I mean, production-wise, this was the absolute biggest production we've ever brought with us. So, it, I mean, I look back when I was a kid and I was watching, like, Iron Maiden on the big stages and, and the stage set they brought. So, coming up on, on a stage like this felt like the little child in me was, I'm up there <laughs> on this fucking stage. <laughs> it, right. it is really a great feeling. Uh, and be up there every night with the pyros and everything. It, it feels fantastic. Right. Do you ever get comfortable being on a big stage like that? Or does every time you go out on stage, are you just like, a, you know, that little kid again where you're like, oh, my God, I'm getting out here in front of 20,000 people? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it takes a little while uh, in the beginning to, to get used to it, uh, especially if you have to be in certain positions. Maybe you have to, to sing in the microphone and all of a sudden you're in the middle, upstairs on the stage. Oh, right. the, the chorus starts now and I'm supposed to be at the mic stand. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it takes a bit to, to get used to it. So, But other than that, I mean, it's great fun. Sure, definitely. Now, um, am I wrong in thinking that you guys toured with Sabaton for that tour, for, for the bulk of the tour? Yeah, I mean, we did a full uh, U.S. Uh, North America tour, uh, so that was also a great package. I mean, Sutton and, and Hammerfall, uh, two sw Swedish bands, it was great fun for us being opening for, for Sabaton and, and having such a great time. They brought us up to much bigger venues and, and uh, that really helped us to, to reach out to a lot more people in the U.S. Sure. What did did playing with them who they're very theatrical as well you know they bring a big whole you know it's almost like a movie or a play when you yeah. see them perform did that did that fuel you guys to come out with just that little bit more energy to really you know blow the doors off before the big before they came on i mean i can't say it didn't help but uh at the same time, we always try to give 100% when we do a show because, you know, the audience has paid their tickets and, and they come there to get entertained. Sure. And uh, if, if we want to, I mean, we have to entertain from the beginning. So get out there, do 100% and, and keep on going. So, and, and having the, the guys in, in Sabaton watch on the side, 
it it really fuels up to to give a, a little more. Sure, definitely, and and it, it really is amazing how popular they've become. You know, in in kind of a they're they're sort of an oddity to this to the genre where, you know, where Hammerfall, you guys obviously are a very much more traditional metal type of a band sabaton having that whole war thing and everything's a story and everything that's really kind of an enigma and it's surprising that they've gotten as big as they've gotten yeah but i mean they've been working their asses off they they've been touring so much and they did their homework with everything so sure. they keep on growing and i I'm, i i totally understand it why they are so popular um and uh being behind the stage of everything, they are really a well-planned band these days. So sure. well-deserved, well-deserved. Definitely. But we're not here to talk about Sabaton. We're here to talk <laughs> about Hammerfall. And, you know, you guys, for Live Against the World, you were touring on uh, Dominion, which I thought was one of the best, one of the best Hammerfall records really since... You know, I, I might say like since like the early 2000s, you know, it, it was one of the strongest. The performances were especially so strong. Joachim's voice was amazing on it. Talk a little bit about that for you guys. When, when you were putting it together and when you actually heard it for the first time, did you know that you were onto something that was, you know, the next higher level than what you'd been creating previously? Or do you even think that? Yeah, I think it's a great record. Uh, it's the strongest one that we've done for in, in many years, I would say. Uh, it's hard to com compare records to, to the old ones, uh, especially since it's it's the latest and, and it's still new for us. Right. But um, when I heard the demos of it, I can't say that it was that spectacular, but once they formed in the studio and everything gone layer by layer, uh, and you hear how the songs evolve, then I knew we had something really good going on. And I think that shows in, in all the numbers, the, the charts, uh, that we entered really high in a lot of countries. And, uh, and it's been really welcomed very, very well all over the world. Definitely. Now, now uh, Frederick, when you, um, when you put out a new record and you first go out on tour, do you have a little bit more energy or excitement to play those new songs or do you just try to fit them in with everything else and hope that it flows or how do as a musician how does that work for you uh, the songs are pretty new i mean we we try to uh, incorporate every song every new song in the set list but uh yeah, I guess you have a little bit more energy on that song because it's new, you know them so well, you've been playing them in the studios for so many times and rehearsed them. So they are new, fresh in, in the memory. But um, once you get out on stage, that's when you uh, notice if it works or not, uh, how well the audience take the songs. And um, it's, I mean, it's been really good for this tour. Uh, starting out with um, um, Never Forgive, Never Forget. Right. Uh, like a fast-paced song uh, that's in your face and, and gets the people going right at the beginning. Right. So uh, it's, that's one that fits really well. Sure, definitely. Now, um, now Frederick, this is, this is going to go back a little ways with, with you guys, but um, obviously the band's biggest hit is hearts on fire and you know everybody all over the world seems to know that song and it it's a great song don't get me wrong but it was mm. written and recorded at the time that you were not in the band for you do you have that same fondness to it still because it wasn't written with you there or or is it just one of the or do you like the newer stuff that you're on or the really old stuff from the beginning when you were there do you like that stuff better because you actually participated in making it? Nah, I don't know. Uh, all those songs, I was away for 10 years. So it, it's right. not, I mean, there's a lot of songs that I play that I wasn't originally in, but um, it, it doesn't matter actually. Uh, okay. Being on stage, 
the 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 only thing that matters is how well it's um, the, the the audience uh, um, what they give you back from a song. Uh, so playing Hearts on Fire uh, might not be the I mean, you play it over and over again every single night. Uh, right. You kind of get tired of, of just playing, but it doesn't matter because the audience always gets so fucking crazy and loud and okay. they bring everything back to them. Uh, so that's that's a fantastic song to end the show with. Sure. I, I, I've always made the joke that, you know, if you could ask Steven Tyler what he thinks of Dream On, he probably hates playing it right up until he starts playing it and the crowd goes crazy and then he gets right yeah. back into it. Exactly. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's the same for us. <laughs> no doubt, man. Well, um, Frederick, obviously, man, the pandemic has really just basically fucked the music industry in every which way possible, you know. Yeah. And, and I mean, touring is done and, and people are trying to be creative with live streams and, you know, drive-in shows and all this different mm -hmm. stuff. You know, what, what for you guys, both, both yourself individually and for the band, you know, what do you guys do to try and keep things going and keep things moving and, you know, keep earning because, you know, you can't just sit out for two years and not, not make money. No, we, we have to do something, of course. Uh, but at the same time, we are really lucky to just come up with tour, uh, the European tour, and already have planned this uh, session with the release and everything around it. So we have a really accurate uh, something to show the rest of the world. It's not just a live stream from somewhere. It's a sure. fucking epic show. And um, the live streams that... that some bands do. Uh, it was kind of fun in the beginning, but uh, when they play with no audience and, and so on, they don't get the energy back. So they can't right. give anything. So it gets kind of boring after a while, I think. Um, at least the ones that I've seen so far. Um, sure. So hopefully they'll come up with something better. Um, sure. But yeah, we have we have this release now and, and then later on we will uh, enter the studio, I guess, next year somewhere and, uh, and, and do something. Um, but it feels strange because at the same time, we're not finished with the Dominion album cycle yet. We, I right. want to tour a lot more on this album because it's a great album and I, I want to finish it before I start on the next one. Right. Definitely. Does it, does it end up feeling to you like it's uh, like, it's almost a lost record in, you know, in a way, because, because you really didn't get to do everything that you guys thought that you should be doing with Dominion. Well, it's not lost yet. Uh, yeah. We only did parts of it so far. So hopefully we'll get back and, and have a second run on, of, of the next tour cycle, so to speak. So um, hopefully it won't be lost. Uh, it's such a strong album, so it, it can stand by itself. So we will keep on doing some shows on it for sure. Sure, definitely. Now, with all this time, downtime, Frederick, are, are, are you guys in touch like regularly? Are you working on new material? Are you, you know, just, just kind of hanging out and taking it as a long vacation? Where, where, where are the Hammerfall guys all right now with this? Yeah, it's been a really long vacation. Uh, <laughs> in the beginning of the summer, it was fine. But, uh, of course, I, I want to go out and, and do the festival summer and uh, right. bring this big stage set to the biggest festivals on, in Europe. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, right. I, I haven't seen most of the guys since March, actually, since the, okay. the tour ended. Uh, I've been in contact with uh, Oscar. Uh, we met a couple of times. Uh, since it's the closest, uh, he, he lives not that far from me. Okay. Um, but the rest of the guys lives in Stockholm and I'm in Gothenburg. So I haven't seen them since March. It's insane. Yeah. And we're in the same band. We used to live together. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it it really is crazy just how, you know, and 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 people probably don't think of all of that stuff, but part of being in a band and especially a working band such as Hammerfall 
is that constant communication that, you know, that family sort of attitude. And this pandemic really does take that away from you, which, you know, I, I somehow don't think it'll affect, you know, what you do recording wise, but it could, you know, it could change yeah, the chemistry can. as you spend a little time away from each other. Yeah, it definitely can, can do that. But, uh, I mean, we, we're constantly dealing with all kinds of shit together. Uh, it's been a lot of things with this, um, uh, the, the filming and the editing and the sound. And I mean, we're constantly in touch with each other because of everything around. There's a lot of things going on, even, even though it's not seen. Right. So yeah, we keep in touch and, and have a lot of things to discuss. So hopefully Excellent. it will be the same when we get together again i think sure so. well no question well and, and and even if it's not you'll still have live against the world to remember what it was like back then and maybe that'll bring you back to that spot <laughs> yeah that will be bring back some memories for sure definitely well um frederick like we said the new album it is called live against the world it is a um I, I I will argue that as far as live live things go, it's it's one of the most majestic sounding live records I think I've I've heard in the last 10, 15 years. It really it's really well recorded and the video that I have seen looks really, really good. It just looks like if you're a Hammerfall fan, this is something you need to check out, right? Yeah, I, I really hope so. I'm glad you say that because um I think the audio is really, really good. It captures the live sound. Uh, we we didn't care if there was something that was slightly out of tune or missing in tempo or whatever, because it really feels that it's it's a real live recording with, with audience. Uh, so um, if you get in there and start editing everything, then it's not live. And, and you take away a lot of the energy that we want right. to bring on stage so yeah i think it's a great sounding live album like they did in the i mean in the early days in the 70s mm -hmm. 80s it's it's a live recording very good man well i certainly won't argue with you on that because it really sounds fantastic uh frederick where should people go online to keep up with hammerfall and buy the new record or and all the all the stuff they're supposed to do yeah we have our own shop uh, hammerfall.net uh, and click merchandise and we have the the album and uh, we have a triple vinyl and uh, yeah, all kinds of we have shirts and, and stuff for this uh, and then you can check out the the hammerfall tv at youtube as well there um, we have an, uh, our own channel that mostly oscar oscar is speaking a lot in it uh, about yeah he, he had a series with every album and um, yeah some news and stuff awesome well as we said one last time the name of the album is live against the world it is hammerfall and uh, and frederick uh, thanks so much for joining us on aftershocks thanks so much for having me thank you all much. right no problem man thanks for listening to aftershocks for more episodes go to our website at www.aftershockspodcast.com visit us on our facebook instagram and twitter pages for more news and information on the podcast and be sure to subscribe, listen to, and review all episodes on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all other podcast platforms. For your music listening pleasure, visit our website or go to www.shockwavesradio.com. For all comments and questions, please email us at info at aftershockspodcast.com.